Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of a review of the MSI Z87X Power Mainboard and this is to uh, just to demonstrate the UFI layout uh, It's part of this review. Of course if you want to see the actual overview of the physical board itself you can click on the description below or I will put a link uh, embedded into this video later on so you can click on it and see the actual overview of the physical board. But for now, let's take a look at the Z87X Power UFI. You can see that it has the same color theme as the M-Power, and also it is customized specifically for the X-Power, hence the gigantic X-Power logo right in the middle. You can use your keyboard or your mouse. You can see that uh, the mouse is moving quite smoothly. It's a USB mouse, and uh, I'm actually using my PS2 keyboard. And uh, you can hear it's a Model M uh, for those who are uh, keyboard geeks like me. And you can see that I am na I'm navigating with a keyboard as well. Uh, you can't use the left and right keys to navigate with these main links here. You can adjust them using the up and you can go through them by the up or down arrow keys. So let's start here with the Board Explorer. And this basically gives you a visual overview of the main board itself. And uh, you can move the mouse around and t tells you which is uh, plugged into which. So this is a very good tool for troubleshooting whenever you're having problems. For example, detecting if the card is not being detected, it will show you there that it is empty. Obviously, it is empty right now since I don't have any uh, video cards plugged in. But if you do have one and it's disabled there, rather it shows that it's empty, then you know that it's defective. You know, same thing with the SATA ports here. It shows you which one's plugged in, highlighted by the yellow color there. It also tells you what uh, what drive it is. So I just showed you my uh, Agility 4 drive is being detected there since it is highlighted. Also which fan is plugged in, which DIMM slot is plugged in, and if the memory slot obviously, and if the uh, CPU area is in there, it tells you what kind of CPU it is. And uh, same thing with the back ports and whichever one is in use. And uh, let's right click out of that. And next option is the hardware monitor where you can make fan speed adjustments and also uh, do uh, some, some temperature changes. Oh, next did that by mistake. You can adjust minimum uh, target by dragging and dropping. Oh, I, I should have picked a, uh, I'm using a kind of an old mouse here, that's why it's a problem. You can see that it's, I can make some changes here and it will uh, reflect here on the graph on top. And then shows you the CPU temperature as well, and the fan speed shows you the system temperature, and then the voltage is right at the bottom. So just close that, and then the OC profile gives you plenty of room to save and store your settings for your overclocking. I will go over that later, but here you can see that you have six profiles, and then you have the option of loading it from a USB drive or saving it to a USB drive, which is very handy when you're taking. A USB, for example, to an overclocking contest, you can just bring a preset with you if the uh, motherboard is provided. And of course, escape to just go back to the main menu. And uh, you have the M flash, the built in, or um, rather, uh, UFI uh, overclock or UFI upgrading tool. See here, M flash. Since the X Power has a dual UFI, uh, there's a switch there at the, at the physical board itself. You, you can only upgrade one chip at a time, so make sure if you want if you want to upgrade both to the exact same version, you upgrade one and then you flip, uh, turn, on, turn it off and then up, flip the switch and then upgrade it again to upgrade the backup flash, rather the backup memory with it. And also you have um, the OC options here, of course this takes some explaining. Obviously you have the grayed out areas are the current settings and also you can see the base clock adjustments, uh, you can use your uh, plus and minus sign, rather plus and minus keys on the numpad on your keyboard to increase the increment. You see by 0 0.05 increments, so you can definitely pinpoint the specific base clock that you need. Also, CPU base clock adjust, uh, base clock strap. You can do your adjustments there, and your base clock apply mode, CPU PLL, CPU ratio. See that it's. Uh, if it's at auto, say it's reading my CPU frequency as zero right now, but uh, you can just type, start typing whatever ratio you want. So, for example, 4.2 gigahertz, you can just type 42, and see the grayed out error becomes uh, 4.2 4 gigahertz or 4200 megahertz. And CPU ratio, you can do fixed mode or dynamic mode. 
for it will automatically enable EIST and uh, the Turbo Boost function. And uh, by default, uh, it is uh, in fixed mode. And you have the OC Genie function uh, set by onboard button, or you can set it as uh, sort of enabled here by UFI. See there by the bias options, and uh, you can see the button right above here. But by default, it is by the onboard button on the board itself. Now, CPU ring ratio, GT ratio, DRM frequency clock. Uh, I have. Um, as you can see, 266, and also the DRAM frequency at the bottom, where you can adjust and uh, specifically adjust it from 800 megahertz all the way to 3200 megahertz for overclockers out there. And uh, the grayed out error right below that is the current setting. Uh, right now, I have I have it on the JDEC floor of 1333 megahertz, but I can just easily load my XMP profile, enable that quickly, and you can see that it's immediately loaded to 1866 megahertz as what is. Uh, embedded onto the memory chip itself that I'm using and uh, also right at the bottom you have the uh, DRAM training configuration more advanced options for memory overclockers digital power options uh, these I would if, if you're not an extreme overclocker I would suggest leaving these at auto the auto rules are pretty good with this one even for uh, I was able to overclock my memory my CPU here to 4.5 5 gigahertz and uh, you can see that uh, it has options for thermal balance or current balance. Obviously, once you set it to trigger it to current balance, the temperatures will be a lot higher. So I suggest leaving them uh, by default unless you are an extreme overclocker and you, have, you are experienced uh, with handling a lot more voltages. And speaking of voltages, right underneath that, you have all those voltage options for your CPU V core, CPU ring voltage, and CPU GT options just on top, and even the SA voltage options. Uh, because this is the X power, this is their highest end overclocking mainboard for MSI, you have a lot more voltage options as you see here, compared to other MSI mainstream and segment mainboards, and even their gaming mainboards, and even compared to the M power board. And, uh, See there, uh, again, leave it to auto. Uh, auto rules are pretty good with this board so far even for more novice overclockers, but for advanced overclockers, you can do uh, a lot of adjustments here for the uh, voltages. Uh, let me just demonstrate the CPU V-core voltage uh, here. Obviously, everything is in auto, but if you, every option that has a bracket in there, you can just hit enter, choose the option. You have auto or adaptive mode. Adaptive mode, I've noticed, uh, tends to leap a very, uh, uh, it sort of gives you a lot of uh, voltage leaps from, I, I set it to 2.75 and I would get as high as 1.35 whenever I am loading the the, um, the CPU. So I would suggest leave it to override mode, either auto or override mode if you are overclocking and you don't have a beefy water cool, uh, yeah, a beefy water cooling system. I have actually, I used an H110 from Corsair and I used a Fantex DC14PE that you're hearing now. Uh, because I wanted to test how far I can overclock this uh, CPU on this mainboard, and I, I tested out uh, once you reach 1.35, the temperatures reach 90 degrees or higher. So definitely, even these high-end uh, consumer end uh, air coolers and uh, self-contained liquid coolers are not enough for a 4770K. You would need either LN2, which is of course preferable if we're extremely extreme overclocking and also high-end uh, do-it-yourself water cooling kits that you have to assemble. So uh, for a core voltage, you can just start typing whatever voltage you want here. For example, 1.28. Uh, one, I only need 1.275 actually. Um, core voltage offset mode, leave it auto or plus or minus. And core voltage offset, you can just again start typing whatever you want for that. Uh, so again, if uh, if I wanted to go back to auto, just start typing auto. It will go back to auto. But for this one, method option, go back to you have to go to hit enter and then uh, go back to auto again. And uh, right at the bottom, you have your CPU specs, CPU technology options. These are all grayed out because you're just demonstrating you what options are available on your CPU. Memory Z or Memory Z for Canadians and uh, UK guys. XMP information, it reads all of that. And also the same with whatever, it automatically detects which uh, memory slot is being filled out and it doesn't show the ones that are empty. And you have your CPU features, you can enable or disable them here. Hyper threading, for example, 
on his 4770K, and also all the other uh, options here for uh, adaptive thermal monitoring, C state options. And uh, for example, we want to, if you want to disable uh, C state, there you go. And uh, let me see if I can see this advanced C state options here. Um, doesn't really show the uh, if, oh there you go you can set the C state limit if for example you uh, for those interested if they don't if there's a power supply does not support the C6 and C7s which are these last three ones are the new ones that are on the 4770k uh, you might want to limit it to a C3 C2 C0 if your power supply does not support those sleep states just to be safe uh, but there is an auto option I haven't tested it yet because all my power supplies fortunately support Haswell processors so I couldn't test it with a I don't I don't have any power supplies on hand uh, that where I could test whether the auto option would automatically uh, would automatically uh, kick in uh, to the limit that, that is required by that uh, power supply and uh, let's see here options you have also uh that's pretty much it for the oc settings here and uh oh, let me just reset the cpu ratio just uh you can go ahead again cpu ratio auto just again start typing it goes back to 3.5 gigahertz till you turbo it and the settings option right here on the top where you can see the system status uh there's more generic options here you can change the date and time uh the advanced options for pci subsystems your acpi settings your sata ports uh you set the hci by default obviously by now everything should be a hci by default uh disable or enable usb or the onboard lan you have your your uh integrated graphics settings you have your rapid start technology and a smart connect configuration and usb configuration as i mentioned you have the power management as you're disabled by default since it is an overclocking mainboard you have windows 8 configuration you can disable or enable both the intel fastboot or the msi specific fastboot options and the wake up event options and we have also the boot options here where you can override the boot order priorities up to 13 uh boot orders you can configure here and also right below them you have the nested options for the bbs priorities for the usb key ufi key or the hard drive but the easiest part about it is that right on top you can just simply drag and drop this is my favorite option and you have the um, the either go to BIOS option, which is the direct button that goes immediately to the BIOS when you press it. You can disable it here. And also, the uh, this is actually not the physical uh, go to BIOS, this is the uh, go to BIOS in the UFI without requiring to press a button. And uh, it's disabled by default here, but you enable that, it will automatically always boot to the uh, click BIOS 4. And underneath, you have the BBS priorities for the 13 boot options here and the USB key and the UFI key drive BBS priorities as well. But it's a lot easier if you use your mouse here on top, you just simply drag and drop whatever you want to prioritize. For example, I just want my SSD to boot at the very top, so I'll just drag it all the way to the left here. And if I want the USB to be second, I put it down there. You can see how easy it is, and you can see that it is reflected immediately to the boot option order right below in the th list of 13 down there. And let me just... Uh, the other options here is just hit escape. You have a security option for, of course, for advanced users, you have the administrator and a key and chassis intrusion. If you are, uh, you, this is, for example, in a workplace, you want it to be more secure, and the save and exit option, which is nested. And you have several options here discard changes and exit, save changes and reboot, save changes, discard changes, which, of course, just on, saves it onto the board itself and you have restore defaults which is because recommended always whenever you're updating the BIOS or resetting the BIOS uh, restore defaults every time you swap out a processor for example and the boot override that you see listed down at the bottom automatically detects which are what what is plugged in and you can just uh, just simply tap it tap on it and then it will boot automatically onto those so that's uh, pretty much it for this overview of the MSI Z87X power mainboard. Uh, I didn't mention the top part here, but it's pretty much self-explanatory. You have the OC Genie and the temperature here listed in the motherboard temperature. You have the date and time, the BIOS version, and the, the CPU options, and uh, rather the CPU information and the memory size and memory frequency. And right on top is a screenshot, F12. Just for taking a quick screenshot and shows you, uh, you can save it in a FAT32 device.
um, your USB device and shows you where to save it to. If you want to take a screenshot, for example, on your OC settings so you can share it with your friends or just show people uh, where you're having problems with your overclocking and share it in the forums, for example. And uh, that's pretty much it. This is Ron for High Tech Legion. If you have questions or comments, just click on the link below. Also, uh, tweet at us at twitter.com for High Tech Legion. And you can Facebook at Facebook us at facebook.com slash reviews And just pretty much it. If you want, again, to watch the physical overview of the board itself, you can just click on the description below or I will embed it here onto this video. And you can click on that right on top or right below. And uh, that's pretty much it. This is Ron. Once again, thanks for watching. Signing out.